British museums must return that which is not rightfully theirs, from the Rosetta Stone to the Parthenon marbles. We must move past this finder's keeper's mindset. Well, first of all, thank you, Mr. President, for the opportunity to speak in this debate tonight. And well done on an incredible term so far. And I can't wait to see you and your officer team continue to do an excellent job. Ladies and gentlemen, as someone who grew up in both countries, I can confidently say there aren't many things shared in common between Egypt and Britain. The weather is different, the food is different, and the air smells different. And of course, the history is very, very different. Museums are a place where you'd find a lot of history, right? And so naturally, you would expect that with a different history, a museum in Cairo would look quite different to one in London. Actually, though, they look surprisingly similar. If you go to the British Museum, you'll find the self-proclaimed largest, most comprehensive selection of Egyptian antiquities outside of Egypt. The only reason you won't find the pyramids is because they were too heavy to carry them back. <laughs> so what is a British Museum? If we look closer to home, at the Pitts Rivers Museum, just down the road, you'll find more examples of this pattern. In Leeds, where I'm from, at the so-called Leeds City Museum, you'll find display upon display of ancient Egyptian artifacts, with a poster advertising Sinas Yamun, the 3,000-year-old Leeds mummy. What is a Leeds mummy? I know how I ended up in Leeds, but I can't imagine that my ancestors imagined their final resting place to be next to the Yorkshire pudding exhibit. <laughs> The point I want to make in this debate today isn't to state the obvious. We know that British museums aren't very British. I know it, you know it, and side opposition know it too. So the question isn't whether they are, it's about what we do about the fact that they aren't. No, thank you. Now, side opposition has already tried to give you a lesson in semantics and argue about what it means really to be British, but this is missing the, the point of this debate entirely. Whatever British means, whatever definition you adopt. What we do know is that British museums are stocked with artifacts and historical symbols that symbolize great histories of ancient civilizations whose descendants are now unable to enjoy them. Now, I was notified 27 hours ago that I'd be giving this speech, and I had the very exciting task of working out how to articulate my thoughts on a topic which I feel very passionately about. I hope I've done so to an acceptable degree, but in my brief 27 hours, I believe that I've cemented a position which I can argue resolutely. And yet in the 270 years that have passed since the first Egyptian artifact was brought to the UK, British museums have failed to give one good reason or justification as to why they have kept that which belongs to us. Ladies and gentlemen, despite what side opposition might try to convince you of tonight, British museums do not represent the ideals of what modern British society should stand for. Britain should not be ashamed or embarrassed when it returns these artifacts, but should in fact embrace returning them as a sign that we finally moved past an we finally moved past this imperialist past of this country. From an academic perspective, I do understand the value of well-stocked British museums. They give those without the ability to travel the incredibly important and accessible opportunity to learn about other cultures. But if this comes at the detriment of the cultures for which they're teaching about, we have to ask, is it worth it? Why are they withheld from us, their rightful owners, for the benefit of educating British people. British museums educate, yes. British museums represent, yes. But British museums are also temples to an imperialist history which they refuse to make right. We can debate about the educational value of grasping onto these artifacts all we want, and museums can insist that they're conserving these often illegally acquired and ignored remains. But at the end of the day, these are remnants of a colonial past that we must acknowledge. And yet we refuse to give them back. The problem here goes beyond simply stocking colonial remnants. There are clear links between museums and government policy, which make this issue even more stringent. The character of British museums manifests itself in our relations with former colonies too. As they refuse to return Egyptian artifacts, they refuse to return stolen goods from South Asia and many other colonies. And in doing so, they're failing to make diplomatic reparations with the nations that we owe it to, to make right. Even countries which weren't colonies. Take, for example, 11 Ethiopian tablets, which were looted in the Battle of Madla in 1868, which are still to this day held in the British Museum. Now, the British Museum recognizes the sacredness of these tablets, so much so that they refuse to display them 
Only Ethiopian ministers are allowed to see them. So hidden away from the people and yet held onto. Where is the educational value in this or the cultural value? The British Museum is the largest, most comprehensive selection of world artifacts. But it's not. The British Museum is the custodian of the world's largest stolen goods collection. Take the Rosetta Stone, an important symbol of my country's history, which has spent the last 200 years in the British Museum, sitting there in a cold glass box as a mere trophy of Britain's colonial past, when Egypt has made request after request for its return. Seven years ago, Dr. Zahi Hawass, an Egyptian minister, stood in this very spot and asked for the Rosetta Stone back. Seven years later, I stand before you to ask for the same thing. To argue that museums in Britain are representative of British culture is to conflate British culture with its bloody colonial past. As students here in Oxford, it's impossible to ignore the presence of this colonial past around us. Whether it's going to a museum, or even if you want to sit around college, we can't escape this colonial history that this very university has taken part in. Even in these very buildings, no thank you. We have a room that's named after the man responsible for the British occupation of Egypt, Gladstone, who directly enabled the looting and pillaging of Egyptian history. So as students, we benefit from an institution that has, that has profited so greatly from this past. And we do have a moral obligation an active obligation that we should pursue every single day to ensure that these crimes are remedied. This isn't a history we can ignore. If we fail to act, and if we fail to recognize the worrisome state of the museums that we visit, then not only are we forgetting and ignoring the crimes that this country has committed, but we're failing in our most simple duty as British citizens today. We're failing to remedy the mistakes of those who came before us. An argument that's frequently brought up by the opposition in this debate is the need to conserve artifacts that we have taken from other countries. Members and guests, can you think of anything more patronizing than this position? Is there a clearer way to say that we don't trust our former colonies and other nations to look after their own history, to preserve their own culture, or to take care of their own interests? The truth is, ladies and gentlemen, that there's not a single argument that can be made in opposition to this motion that is fair and recognizes the agency and ability of states to preserve and protect our own history and culture. Provenance is an important part of this story and audiences aren't ignorant. And so I'd like to return to the question I put before you at the beginning of this speech. Where do we go from here? Well, the answer is not to educate ourselves at the expense of the rightful owners of this heritage. And the answer isn't to play into the narrative of protection and conservation to mask what is really theft and concealment nor is the answer to remain silent and pretend that there's nothing wrong. The answer, ladies and gentlemen, is action. We must voice our concerns and we must remedy the fact that British museums are in no way British, that British museums are simply representative of everything that we ought to recognize as inappropriate. British museums must return that which is not rightfully theirs, from the Rosetta Stone to the Parthenon marbles. We must move past this finder's keeper's mindset. How British our museums are is ultimately a choice. While the past can never be undone, museums do have control over their future. And if British museums stop hiding behind excuses, perhaps we can have a future where they are actually British. Thank you.